So far, we've only named compounds containing carbon-carbon single bonds, but alkenes and alkynes are organic compounds that contain carbon-carbon double and triple bonds. And when it comes to naming these compounds, we have the interesting issue of how to name a functional group that spans two or more carbons. Thus far, we've only looked at naming substituents bound to a single carbon, which was relatively straightforward. In this video, we'll explore how the IUPAC nomenclature convention addresses this issue of the double and triple bond, and we'll also see how, aside from this relatively minor issue, the process for naming alkenes and alkynes is very similar to the convention we've seen already. We saw for alcohols previously, the parent chain when looking at an alkene or an alkyne needs to include the double or triple bond. So, for example, in the examples you see here, the parent chain needs to go through the triple bond. It could be something like this. You'll notice that both chains off the branch point are two carbons long, so we could have gone either way, but what I've highlighted in green is one possibility for the parent chain. And in the other compound, the parent chain once again needs to pass through the double bond. In these examples, it's relatively straightforward. It's what you would have chosen as the parent chain anyway, but keep in mind that when we're naming compounds with carbon, carbon, double, and triple bonds, the parent chain needs to pass through those carbons. The issue of numbering the parent chain gets to the heart of how we address and name the position of the double and triple bond. It spans two carbons, so if we start to number the parent chain, for example, moving from right to left in the compound here, we run into the problem of there are two numbers associated with the triple bond, one and two. But our mantra from previous examples still applies, and we give the triple bond the smallest number possible. The reason we can do this, and this is okay, is because it's understood structurally that the triple bond is connected to the next number in the sequence. So a one hexine chain, for example, is guaranteed to have a triple bond between the one and two positions. The base name of this parent chain includes the hex prefix, which indicates the length of the chain, and the ein suffix, and the ein suffix y and e indicates that there is a triple bond in this compound. We call this a one hexine because again, the triple bond shows up at the one position. It's between the one and two carbons and we associate it with the smaller of those two numbers. In the example on the right, we again start numbering so that we give the smallest numbers possible to the double bond, starting on the right and moving to the left. And as before, we see that the double bond is between the two and three carbons, and so we give it the number two. Because the chain is seven carbons long, we call this a hept, and because it contains a double bond, we call it a heptene. This is a two-heptene parent chain. To finish naming these, the process is exactly the same. We look for substituents. We see we have an ethyl here. This is a four-ethyl substituent that shows up at the four position, and so the full name of this compound is 4 ethyl one hexine. In the right-hand case, in the alkene, we have two methyl substituents, both at the 6 position, so this is a 6, 6 dimethyl 2 heptene. Cycloalkenes are cyclic structures that contain a carbon-carbon double bond within the ring. The most important rule to remember here is that one of the carbons in the C double bond C must be position 1. Do assign the smallest numbers possible when you're numbering, but be sure to keep the carbons of the double bond contiguous. And what do I mean keep the carbons of the double bond contiguous? Well, for example, in the compound you see here, the temptation might be to start numbering here and move to the left so that the isopropyl group, remember this is an isopropyl group right here, two methyls bound to a central CH, gets position three. The problem with that is if we continue to number around, we end up with a double bond that spans carbons one and six. And this is contrary to the convention. Remember, the convention stipulates that carbons of a double or triple bond need to have numbers that are right next to each other. One, two, three, four, etc. The two carbons of the double or triple bond need to be what I call contiguous. The way to achieve this is instead of starting by numbering with that carbon, we start numbering one at the other carbon of the double bond so that the isopropyl group still gets a relatively small number, still gets the number four, but we've kept the carbons of the double bond contiguous. One carbon is carbon one, and the other is carbon two. This is the proper numbering scheme, and it leads to the name 4-isopropyl, because of that isopropyl substituent we see, cyclohexene. And you'll sometimes see between the substituent and cyclohexene, the number one wedged in here to illustrate that the double bond shows up at position one.
Briefly, I'd like to mention two new substituents that contain double bonds that are simple enough that they're named as substituents when they show up attached to, for example, heteroatoms like nitrogen or oxygen. So the official IUPAC name of the substituent on the left is ethenyl. So ethene is the official name of C2H4, and the ethenyl substituent is C2H4 in which one of the hydrogens has been replaced by something else. The old school name for this substituent is vinyl, and you'll still see this used very often. It's just a carbon-carbon double bond and the associated hydrogens, like you see here. When a CH2 group sneaks in between the double bond and whatever else is present, we call this an allyl substituent. And this is a case where the official IUPAC name is relatively unwieldy because not only do we need to specify the position of the double bond, but we also need to indicate where the parent chain or where the remain remainder of the molecule is with respect to this double bond. For example, we could imagine a related substituent that has, say, a methyl group attached to the double bond directly, but the attachment point to the parent chain is at the two position of the double bond instead of the saturated carbon. This is a different kind of substituent. It's not an allyl substituent, and so it has a different name completely.